All right, so Paul, I mean, it seems cool, but you're talking about we have a couple of hundred comets. So now you're saying not only do we have a couple hundred, we have multiple times more than the asteroid belt, which is already a lot. And we also not only have one Oort cloud, but two that sometimes migrate in and out over the periods of millions of years. I, it seems tedious, let's say. It's, it's, it's a lot of extrapolation. Yeah. So we see, probably with good data, we have a few hundred long period comets yep. which have okay. their orbits plotted well enough. And again, this is not including the Jupiter or Halley's mm -hmm. comet. Yep. Yep. And from the energies of these, we extrapolate outwards from a few hundred comets to you know, about a trillion in this giant cloud that we can't see, totally uh, yeah. invisible. <laughs> it's giant a big cloud, step. It's a, big a light step. year in size. In fact, two giant clouds, not just one, two for the price of one. We have the outer cloud and the inner cloud with and different And one's properties. a light year away and one's much smaller and they sometimes have gra waves through the Milky Way that change them and move them and migrate them. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I think a little bit of skepticism is probably in order here. I mean, hopefully I've explained the argument. Yeah. Um, I mean, that energy curve is pretty it's strange. It's pretty convincing and it's pretty strange, yes. Yeah, but it is a lot of extrapolation. So I wouldn't be entirely surprised if there's actually no such thing as an Oort cloud and there's just something else possibly even weirder, going on out there. But heaven knows we can't see anything out there. Is there any solutions to this? Not really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people thought, I mean, we, we talked about how things get fate when they get away from the sun. That means even something the size of an Earth-like planet, you can't see it out of a thousand astronomical yeah. units. And these comets are much smaller than that. They're also almost black. Yeah. And you're putting them out hundreds and thousands of times further. People thought maybe you could watch them go in front of another star so you can see them block yep. out the light. And there have been attempts to do this. The trouble is, one of these things goes in front of the disk of a star. It's going to be only block a very, very small fraction yeah, of the light. But right. maybe that's possible. Um, I mean, we've gotten better techniques of doing this with exoplanets and even now exomoons. So it seems plausible for a few. But I don't. again, it doesn't seem like we're ever going to be finding millions of these things. No, that's true. Um, another issue is whether these things could be responsible for mass extinctions on Earth. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a, we looked at this a bit in the asteroid section in a part of the course, and it seems that if they come into the solar system, as you said, we've seen them hit Jupiter, do they hit Earth? Yep. I mean, long period comets are a hard thing. We, we've said that most of the asteroids that are big have now been mapped. Yep. There might still be a few out there, so there is still some risk, and there's still a risk of being hit by the small ones that haven't been mapped. Yep. But of course, these long period comets, you can't predict them. Yeah, I mean, we don't even see them until they're kind of do, 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 and then all of a sudden, hey, they're there. Yeah, so in that sense, they're a worse thing. We, we might pick them up between the orbit of Saturn and Jupiter, mm. which would give us maybe a year or two's warning before they hit us, if we're lucky. Mm. Um, but it's nothing like the hundreds of years of warning we're likely to get for most asteroids. Yep. Luckily, the statistics seem to suggest it's, it's a much smaller risk than that of meteorites. Okay. On average, but there's long been a speculation that maybe the average hides variations. Okay. Um, so here, here's the basic idea. Now, this is probably not true, but I'll tell you the basic idea f first. If you look at, this is the extinction rate of microscopic underwater life forms. Okay, and so these are different extinct... These are different geological periods. Yep, exactly. Um, I assume triassic, triassic. triassic. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured that, yep. Um, and what you're basically doing is you take a bit of rock from this and you look under a microscope and you see all these microscopic sea fossils. Okay. And every now and then you find that you're seeing different sea fossils. Okay. And that probably indicates the previous bunch were wiped out and some new bunch came along. Yep. And so what you can basically say is, how rapidly did they get wiped out? Okay. And so what you're looking at here is how rapid the turnover of these sea fossils is. And you can see a number of extinction events. Yeah, I mean, because there's these huge spikes and then they fall off and then they go up again and fall off. Yeah. So most of the time, there's a steady churn of these species, but there are certainly particular times when you look at a rock just below and just above that layer and there's a huge difference. Yep, okay. Um, this is the one that killed the dinosaurs. Yep. But so there's definitely ones that are even bigger than the dinosaurs. Yes, yeah, so the Permo-Triassic one here is the biggest extinction one on record. It's much worse than the one that killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> and this one gets all the media attention. Yeah, because <laughs> it's dinosaurs. Um, but the claim, I mean, this one we think is the meteorite, as yep. we talked about. Um, but there are many other things that could wipe us out. Yep. But one possibility is maybe there's a periodicity to this. So oh, okay. if you look at this data, yeah. uh, people are thinking maybe they happen every... Because it kind of looks like here, and then here, and then here, and here. 
Yeah. Now, the trouble is humans are very good at spotting patterns where there aren't any in the yes. data. I mean, I look at this and I say, it's got random spikes. I, it's not at all obvious to me there's any periodicity mm. here. But people have tried all these fancy sort of statistical analyses. And of course, if you look at any sort of data long and hard enough, you'll probably find something. That's right. It's totally spurious. The yep. human brain is weird to, wired to find patterns where there aren't any, because that's much safer than not firing, finding a lion when it's about to eat you. Exactly. That's right. Um, it's a good thing. Yep. But one claim is there might be a 20 year, million year or 60 million year periodicity. OK. And you can try and fit the few big extinctions up and maybe try and force them to fit this. And so the idea is that every 20 or 60 million years, there's a comet that comes in? Well, so the other question is, if there is a periodicity here, and I'm not at all convinced there is, then what could cause these sort of things to happen? On a regular frequency, OK. Yeah. So one possibility, that was speculated for a while, is that maybe our sun is actually a binary star. Oh, uh, okay. Because we yeah, talked about the stars, yeah. of course, most stars right. are binaries or yep. triples. Yeah, like Alpha Centauri or nearby stars. Yes. So our sun being all by itself is actually quite unusual. Yeah. But maybe we have a binary companion, which is a very small one, like a brown dwarf or a red dwarf star. Which we know there's a lot of. Yes. And maybe this binary companion is a very long way out, like Proxima around Alpha and Beta Centauri. Yep. Um, and in a very elliptical orbit. And right uh, now it's maybe a light year yeah. away. Even so, you'd think a star, a light year away, I mean, stars shine. They're not yes. affected by the same uh, inverse fourth power of distance that planets are. That's right. But there was some thought that maybe you could hide it in the Milky Way, because there's a lot of other stars in the Milky yep. Way. If it's right in front of the densest parts of the Milky Way, it might be hard to spot, because yeah. there are just okay. so many other further away, brighter stars out there. Yep. And maybe it has a 20 or a 60 million year period. And what it could do is when it comes closer, it could stir up the comet belt, maybe and, the inner Oort cloud, yep. or maybe even the Kuiper belt. And it so essentially then bombards the inner solar system with stuff? Yep. So it will go past, stir up the comets. It still would never come close enough to affect the orbits of the planets, but it could cause huge numbers of comets to come in. And so instead of yeah. being one big impact, it might be comet but, after comet. Yeah, yeah, here okay. comes another comet. It's Thursday, bang. Um, and so that's one possible theory. OK. Um, when the first infrared satellite were launched, they discovered lots of these strange infrared sources that could be seen at visible wavelengths. And people, right. A whole conspiracy theory started that this was Nemesis and NASA was keeping it secret yep. not to scare us. Um, there are infrared satellites and much better ones now, yes. and they do spot lots of infrared sources, but these turn out to be distant galaxies. Yes. Um, Even things like quasars, very distant, yes. Yes, so we know what they are, and it's nothing like this. And I think this has now ruled out the hypothesis that there is this binary star. It's called Nemesis, because yes. it do horrible things. And that's, that's, it still has a life as an internet meme, but I think it's, the infrared satellites have now pretty comprehensively ruled out. Because in fact, yeah, a lot of like these that. actually have, like Neowise, have been mapping the comets, in fact, to discover them. And the asteroids, and if you could discover something four kilometers wide at that distance, you could probably s discover something yeah. much, much bigger. So that theory is dead as a door off in terms of the data, though, of course, like many of these conspiracy theories, they it never go on the away. internet. Yep. But people are still holding this as possible mass extinctions. And maybe they're thinking about our sun maybe orbits above and below the plane of the galaxy. Yep. And maybe whenever it goes through the plane of the galaxy, the tides cause more to come in. Or? And again, it doesn't really seem to work mathematically because the tides are actually pretty much the same no matter where we are and they're yep. moving up and down. So I don't think that really works, but some people are claiming that. And I think that could be the case is it just a a star wanders past, and then a few million years later, a whole bunch of comets that were stirred up by that star come down. Come down, yep. Um, and we don't really know which stars were near us 60 or 240 million years. That's right. We can't predict the orbits that far ahead, so I guess it's possible. Um, but it probably wouldn't be a quick extinction, because if something came past, it's going to stir up the comets. But these comets are at orbits that are millions of years yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, it's going to take so, a long time. So it'll be a steady bombardment over a few million years of comets. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't think it's taken very seriously. Um, there are plenty of other things that can cause extinctions, like it could well be that massive volcanic eruptions are responsible for some of these things. That's right. Um, but it's an interesting idea. I don't, I'm not sure there's very much in it, but you know, I could be proven wrong. Okay. So potentially something to think about, but not something to lose sleep over. No.